as you were talking about the 30 grams and the leucine piece, it got me thinking about the fact that when it comes to nutrition labels and how we look at protein as a whole, we never really talk about amino acids. We're always just talking about protein, protein, but we've already proven here and we know that there's essential and non-essential amino acids. So we know it does matter, but the food industry tends to just lump it all into protein and dismiss all the, the nuance there. Yeah, um, you've actually just waded into the primary thing I'm working on at the moment, which is essential amino acids. So uh, I just gave a talk in Boston at the annual meeting of the American Society of Nutrition on exactly that topic. Uh, and let me, let me give your listeners a few examples of that. For example, protein on the package isn't even protein. It's a nitrogen measurement. Uh, they just go in and they do a crude nitrogen measurement. And it may not even be protein at all. It could be urea. It could be nucleic acids. It could be contaminants by melamine or something. And then they call it protein. And they call it protein by multiplying it by two point, uh, by 6.25, which assumes that every amino acid has the same amount of nitrogen, which isn't true either. Uh, non-essential amino acids like, uh, I believe arginine has 32%, uh, or no, or glycine has 32%, arginine has 19%. So it's not 16% at all, where the essential amino acids, methionine has only nine, uh, leucine has 11. And so what we know is that the non-essential amino acids all are the, are that plant proteins always have more non-essential amino acid than animal proteins. So the label is distorted to look like there's more plant protein in plant protein bo you know, boxes than, than animal protein. So everything about it is distorted uh, to really confuse the consumer in many respects. And I've been arguing that anything that puts protein on the box should also have to put the nine essential amino acids on the box. And we published a paper in Journal of Nutrition just last month, actually, on that exact topic. So to make sure I'm clear on what you said there, a piece of it, that when it comes to plant-based products, what we see on the label is generally going to be a higher estimate than what's actually in the product. Yeah, totally. For, for the reasons I outlined, and there's still another one, which is bioavailability, you know, digestion absorption, if it's a plant-based protein, the digestion absorption is probably no better than 70%. Uh, wheat protein, which is the predominant uh, plant protein in North America, 80% of the plant proteins consumed in the United States comes from wheat. And the digestion, uh, the absorption of wheat protein is about 40%. This right here is my favorite protein powder, the 100% grass-fed bone broth protein from Paleo Valley. It comes in three flavors, unflavored chocolate and vanilla. The chocolate and vanilla you can just mix with water, they taste incredible just like that. And I like to take the unflavored, scoop it in my black coffee, mix it in, I barely taste it, but I'm getting that collagen and protein boost. These protein powders have been third-party tested for over 40 different herbicides and pesticides. They've come back negative. There's no chemicals or solvents used in the processing, just water. As a viewer of the show, click the link in the description to save 15% off this protein today. Again, this is my favorite protein. I know you're gonna love it. Okay, this is good that we're getting into this because why I want to highlight that, make sure I understood, is to bring that into the whole vegan, plant-based, vegetarian conversation. So there's two different things that are not going for those that group of people. One being the label estimating too high, two being absorption, three being the fact that diet is generally going to be higher in carbohydrates and lower in protein in general. So talk about how you think about the plant-based diet being an expert in the realm of protein. So let's sort out two things. One is, you know, should people eat more broccoli and green beans and avocados and, you know, blueberries? Absolutely. There's no question that uh, the plants in our diet aren't very healthy. The number one plant in the U.S. diet is French fries. The number two is tomato sauce on pizza. And then number three is lettuce. So 
Do we need a more plant-based diet? No, we need a diet with better plants. <laughs> so that's the first thing. Then the second thing is, do we need to shift our plant protein? And so we've been doing some modeling experiments uh, looking at the essential amino acids and plant-based diets. And what we know is that based on the RDA for the essential amino acids, if you get below about 50%, animal protein, if you become more vegetarian, if you get below 50% of your protein coming from animal protein, you can't meet your essential amino acid requirement with the RDA. So now what we have to do is increase the amount of protein per day so a, so a vegetarian can meet their essential amino acids with beans and legumes and nuts and seeds and soy products, but they're going to have to have more protein to do it. Uh, and instead of, you know, a minimum of, of average vegetarians around 65, they're probably going to need 80 plus to be sure they meet their essential amino acids. And the calories go up to the point you are making. Uh, if you're using carbohydrate-based proteins, beans, legumes, whatever, uh, the carb to protein ratio is about three to one or four to one. So you remember I said, you know, to balance this out, we would need a one-to-one -one ratio. Well, you can do that with animal proteins because they contain basically no carbs. But if you get all of it from beans, now you're fighting a four-to-one ratio. So to get to 100 grams of protein, you're going to have to eat 400 grams of carbs to get there. Uh, that's, that's a lot of carbs to burn off at, you know, 60 grams per hour of exercise. I guess that's where supplementing with a protein powder could be helpful. And so that's, you know, that is exactly. So if you're, if you're going to be a vegetarian or certainly a vegan, uh, you probably need to commit to isolated proteins. And so now you're committing to ultra processed foods. And so if you think that's a healthier approach to life, uh, and if you think that's sort of better, uh, you can do it that way. It certainly works. But, um, the science behind that becomes very iffy. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. It's all about balance and ratios. And so again, you can do it. And there's vegetarians and vegans out there who are very skilled at it, but the average consumer has no clue.